and welcome to Ramp Roundup, a weekly summary of energy news from the Upper Midwest region. It's the week of October 29th, 2007, and I'm Elena Belkov. South Dakota Public Utilities Commissioner Gary Hansen is pushing for more power nationwide from renewable energy. Hansen also sits on the National Association of Regulatory Utility Commissioners. That group passed a resolution urging Congress to approve a 10-year renewal of the 1.5 cent per kilowatt hour production tax credit for electricity from wind, solar, geothermal, and biomass energy resources. Hansen said in a press release that the tax credit would lead to six times more wind production. The Iowa Consumer Advocate has filed a document opposing Aligned Energy's proposed coal plant in Marshalltown. The 800-page document cited the plant as a health threat and an unnecessary expense, according to the Des Moines Register. The group's experts will testify that the plant's emissions would be comparable to putting 740,000 more cars on the roads. Florida's FPL Energy is building a wind farm in northeast North Dakota. It will comprise 106 turbines. They would provide enough energy to power 40,000 homes, according to the Grand Forks Herald. Operations should begin by the end of the year. Illinois utility ComEd has requested 8% rate increases for customers. If it's approved, it would mean a hike of $6 a month for the average home, according to the Chicago Tribune. ComEd says it needs to replace old infrastructures and extend services to growing counties. ComEd recently began sending rebate checks to customers after the legislature passed an electric rate relief package. Wisconsin farmers are in the middle of the state's largest corn harvest, according to the Associated Press. They planted 4 million acres of corn, 400,000 more acres than last year. The demand for corn has increased, and 20% will go toward fuel. Incidentally, the price of corn has increased as well. Agassiz Energy LLC has delayed its plan to build a methanol plant in northwest Minnesota. The company's president, Donald Sargent, said the delay is a result of weak prices for alternative fuel and fuel blending stations that are already at their limit. Agassiz is the fourth company to recently announce delays in plant construction. Sargent hopes the situation will change in the next six months. And that's the news for this week. From all of us at Ram Roundup, thank you for being with us. Please join us next week.